So for many Americans, their perceptions of Muslims have been shaped by terrorist organizations such as ISIS, Boko Haram, and Al-Qaeda. How does your art address and perhaps challenge those perceptions? And do you ever feel pressure to apologize or compensate for the actions of such groups? Sure, so I, I think in, in terms of perception, I gave this TEDx speech about why I made the film. And, and from a marketing background, one of the things that I had said was, you know, if there's a brand like Pepsi, they'll hire Beyonce to represent them. Nike has Michael Jordan and LeBron James. And in Islam, and, and, and for Muslims, you know, our, the people who are associated with us might be Muhammad Gaddafi, Saddam Hussein. We really had no control of our narrative. And we also had no real Muslim heroes that were projected out there for Americans to take a look at and to see. We had Muhammad Ali and Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, but there's some controversies around them as well. And so I, I think part of the narrative was really changing the viewpoint in terms of how people perceive and see Muslims, because in general media, as we all know, if you look at, if you look at media in general, Nightline was started because of the Iranian hostage situation. CNN, I used to buy advertising on CNN for $50 a 30 second spot, and then the first Persian Gulf War hit, the guys got stuck in the hotel, if you remember that, and CNN became a national news network. Fox's ratings took off after September 11th. So the media, it's not that they're necessarily cruel, it's that they know that fear, and especially Islam, and things that people don't understand, sell well. If you watch the local news, it's always about robberies and you know issues in schools. It's not about somebody getting straight A's and, and doing really well. So I think part of that was us changing the narrative around and us presenting images um, of who we really are. And we can't rely on third parties to do that. So that's one of the reasons why, why I made the film. I would agree with what you're saying. I feel that <coughs> for me, um, there was so much missing in the 9-11 narrative. And I really felt that uh, when I wrote Unveiled, it was an opportunity to share with folks what they weren't hearing. Um, one of the stories deals with um, a woman who lost her brother in the Twin Towers, and it was really important to me to present in my play the reality that Muslims not only died in the Twin Towers, but were first responders. Um, as firefighters, police, paramedics, doctors, and so often that part of the 9-11 narrative is completely missing. And um, it was very powerful to present the play and have a post-show discussion afterwards and, have, and to be able to talk about that with audiences and to, and to really um, have this moment where people realized that Muslims are a part of New York, they're a part of New Jersey, they're a part of the community. 9-11 impacted everybody. And um, it was really great for me to be able to share that theatrically. Um, also, another thing, just to be able to share stories. I mean, uh, a lot of people don't know that the first person murdered after 9-11 was a Sikh man. His name was Balbir Singh Sodi, And he was murdered by a man who was boasting that he was going to do what others didn't have the nerve to do. Balbir, part of his religion, he wore uh, a turban and had a beard as part of the Sikh faith. And he was mistaken for Muslim and murdered him. Um, you know, I recently performed Unveiled in Arizona. And in the audience was Balbir's brother, Rana Sodi. And it was one of the most powerful performances of my life to perform my play and that refers to Balbir and to have Rana see it. And his response was so powerful. What he said will stay with me forever. He said to me, I never cared about interfaith work, Rabina, until my brother Balbir was murdered. And now Rana has become a leader in the interfaith movement. And it was just such an honor to meet him. But, um, but I really feel that um, art and storytelling has a power unlike anything. Uh, there's so much power in storytelling and, and we have to tell our stories. It makes such a difference. I've experienced that, I know. And uh, you know, art may not change the world. What you see on stage may not change the world, but it changes hearts. And if you go one heart at a time, that's making a difference. And I feel like um, 
uh, the work artists do, they're not wasting their time. Um, the thing that I think is problematic about that question is basically we're all, it's forcing us to define ourselves through the prism of somebody else. Uh, so we're always having to define who we are in relation to the West, or Westerners having to define themselves in relation to those groups. And that's their point of view too, right? Um, for the West, Daesh, you know, ISIS, they're savages. For Daesh, the West are savages. So the, I think that the problem is that those groups, for me anyway, are destroyers of culture. <laughs> Um, the conflict are destroyers of culture. Artists are creators of culture. And so I think that it has to, we have to stop defining ourselves in terms of something else uh, in opposition to something else, right? Like a dialectic, right? Instead, we have to create a bigger picture, uh, create our own culture, speak for ourselves to create. Um, one of the reasons in the Islamic Golden Age Supposedly, these terrorist groups want to go back to a golden age. But if you look at who was around in the golden age, there was a larger, broader range of discussion theologically than exists within their worldview. So, um, even maybe and possibly in modernity. So, I think that uh, if we really want to be creators of culture, we have to make room for everything all types of opinions, whether they don't fall within a certain party line uh, or ideolo ideology, to have a space to be discussed. And I think that's what our job said, is artists. I just want to sort of piggyback on that thought and um, say that part of the purpose of the books that uh, my co-editor Aisha and I put together was smashing this idea of the Muslim monolith. So that Muslim monolith, it exists both within the Muslim community and outside the Muslim community. So within the Muslim community, there's ideas about who is a Muslim and how a Muslim acts and behaves and dresses. And so when we were seeking stories for the books, we said, if you self-identify as Muslim, you're welcome to contribute a story to our book. And, 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 and part of it is after the book came out, people said, well, so-and-so is dating or this person's having sex or this person's doing whatever, that's not Muslim behavior, that person's not Muslim. And so that was something that we really yeah. want. Because Muslims, Muslims don't have, have sex, sex, right? right? <laughs> <laughs> um, so part of that was pushing back against that idea of the Muslim monolith, but it's also pushing back against the Muslim monolith idea that exists, um, the perception of Muslims from outside of the community. Um, and I think we use, you know, we use love stories and and part of that really was because, first, we're all hopeless romantics, um, but also the idea that a love story really connects hearts, and it's something, love is a universal emotion that, that people, um, that really resonates with people. So we wanted to use this universal language of love. So people can see themselves reflected in something that's not ISIS or not, you know, I, but that wasn't our conscious idea, you know, put you. I, I want to sort of, say that one of our, one thing that really disturbs me is the way that as a community, as a Muslim community, we've become so defensive and jumping into these pre-existing frames. Um, and, you know, we put out Love Inshallah because we love love stories and we wanted to hear the love stories of our girlfriends and our <coughs> friends. And that's something that we wanted, which is why we put the collection out. It wasn't a response to anything. It was a creation of something that was missing in our lives. But if it has this you know, unintended benefit, then so be it. But um, I think it's really about not being reactionary, but putting out the stuff that you want to see. I feel like everything has been said on this topic. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I agree with everything that was said. <laughs>